Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the virtual gospel meeting at the Carthage Church of Christ. It's been put together by Brother Justin Malden and some of our young men, and we are so happy that you've chosen to be a part of this uh, broadcast this evening. Uh, Brother Matthew Jones will be speaking tonight. He will be speaking on the prophecies of the Scripture under the general theme of three reasons to believe the Bible is from God. We know this will be a faith-building study, and we urge you to be with us not only tonight, but also tomorrow night and on Thursday evening at 7 p.m. each evening. We thank you so much for being interested in the study of God's Word, and we know that you will be blessed by the study this evening. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for yet another day and all the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you for the opportunity to come here tonight, Heavenly Father, and study your word. And we pray that you'll please be with Brother Matthew in the lesson that he's prepared. Allow him to remember what he has prepared for us, Heavenly Father, and that pray that we as listeners would do what we can to listen and apply it to our lives going forward, Heavenly Father. Please be with all of the sick and afflicted of our communities around us. Please be with our caretakers, Heavenly Father, all those dealing with this virus. Pray that you would protect us all, Heavenly Father, and grant us safety and health as you see fit. And we pray that the church of the world over, Heavenly Father, would be the examples that we should be to those around about us and spread your word in truth, Heavenly Father, and keep our eyes on that ultimate goal of heaven that we have through your Son, Heavenly Father. We ask that you please forgive us of our sins, and it's in your Son's name that we pray. Amen.
Hello, my name is Matthew Jones. I'm a member here at the Carthage Church of Christ. And due to this COVID pandemic and all the mess that's been going on, we weren't able to hold our gospel meeting here. So me and two other men of the congregation, Teddy Spivey and Seth Hackett, we have put together a lec lectureship for y'all and it's entitled Three Good Reasons to Believe the Bible. And the uh, reason I've got is prophecies in the Bible. So today I have a lesson prepared called Three Prophecies in the Bible. If you want to go ahead and be turning to 2 Timothy chapter 3, I'll read verses 16 and 17 in just a minute. But the Bible is the most popular book that has ever been printed. It is one of the first books mass produced in Gutenberg's printing press in 1455. To estimate the total number of Bibles and proportions of it that have been produced and distributed worldwide throughout history would be virtually impossible, but the number stands over 10, well over 10 billion. Since the United Bible Society in the past 70 years alone has distributed over 9 billion Bibles. Without dispute, the Bible is the best-selling book in all time worldwide. So why is the Bible so popular? One reason is because those who print the Bible and distribute it believe that it is in, and read it is, the, it is the inspired Word of God. When people read the Bible, for the most part, they don't think it's just good advice from mere men, nor do they think it's a fairy tale or some made-up story for entertainment. Instead, they believe that the book that they are reading is the product of the one true God. When people are asked to give reasons, they support, give reasons to support that their, that their belief that the Bible is from God, is they say that the Bible claims to be from God. And that's certainly true, and it contains numerous state, and then the Bible contains numerous statements that claim inspiration. Second Timothy chapter three, verse 16 through 17 reads, "All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction." and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. This claim does not prove anything of itself, but there are many books that claim to be inspired from God, but contradict what the Bible has said and have been proven inaccurate and inadequate. Just because a book states or claims it is of divine inspiration does not prove that it is of divine inspiration. I could stand here and claim a hundred times over and over that I'm Tom Brady, but until you see me in a Bucks jersey playing on the field on Sunday, I'm not Tom Brady. When Jesus revealed himself to the world as the Son of God, and we learned that he's about to age 30 according to Luke 3.23, he did not expect people to believe him just because he simply said he was the Messiah. On the contrary, Jesus said, If I do the works of my Father, do not believe me. But if I do, though you do not believe me, believe the works, that you may know and believe that the Father is in me, and I in him. John 10, 37 through 38. If the Lord was not to be trusted just on claims of messiahship, neither should the Bible. Again, though the claim of inspiration is important, mere claims prove nothing. So, what is the proof that the Bible is of supernatural origin? Why should an honest truth seeker come to the conclusion that the Bible is the special revelation from the creator of the universe? In short, the main reason that the Bible is demonstrated to be of divine origin is because the Bible writers were correct in everything they wrote about the past, about the present, and even the future. So if the omnipresent, omnipotent, and omniscient God truly does exist, and we know that He does, then God could produce a book for human creation that is flawless in its production. He could guide men to write about event, events over thousands and thousands of years with no mistake. 1 Peter 1, 20-21 reads, Knowing this, first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture comes from somebody's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. God gave men the knowledge to write about future events with perfect accuracy. The reason that a person can come to a rational decision that the Bible is given by inspiration of God is because the writers of the Bible were amazingly accurate about everything they wrote. So what prophecies were given that predicted the future? So one of the first examples of predictive prophecy is the fall of the city of Tyre. According to history, the Phoenician city of Tyre is considered one of the most ancient and prosperous, city, prosperous cities in history. The prophet Ezekiel spoke about many events that were going to occur in Tyre as punishments for the city's relentless and prideful actions. Turn with me to Ezekiel chapter 26, and I'll read the first 14 verses. Ezekiel 26, starting in verse 1. It said, In the eleventh year, on the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came to me. 
son of man, because Tyre said concerning Jerusalem, the gate of the people is broken, it has swung open to me. I shall be replenished now that she is laid to waste. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Tyre, and I will bring up many nations against you, as the sea brings up its waves. They shall destroy the walls of Tyre and break down her towers, and I will scrape her soil from her and make her a bare rock. She shall be in the midst of the sea, a place for the spreading of nets. For I have spoken, declares the Lord God. And she shall become plunder for the nations, and her daughters on the mainland shall be killed by the sword. Then they will know that I am the Lord. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will bring up against Tyre from the north Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, king of kings, with horses and chariots, and with horsemen and a host of many soldiers. He will kill with the sword your daughters on the mainland. He will set up a siege wall against you and throw a mound up against you and raise a roof of shields against you. He will direct the shock of his battering rams against your walls, and with his axes he will break down your towers. His horses will be so many that their dust will cover you. Your walls will shake at the noise of the horsemen and your wagons and chariots when he enters your gates as men enter that city that has been breached. With the hooves of his horses he will trample all your streets. He will kill your people with a sword, and your mighty pillars fall to the ground. They will plunder your riches and loot your merchandise. They will break down your walls and destroy your pleasant houses. Your stones and timber and soil, they will be cast into the midst of the waters. And I will stop the music of your songs, and the sound of your lyres shall be heard no more. I will make you a bare rock, you shall be a place for the spreading of nets. You shall never be re rebuilt, for I am the Lord, and I have spoken, declares the Lord God. The prophet here predicted that Nebuchadnezzar, a king of Babylon, would build a siege mound against the city. He predicted that many nations would come against Tyre. He predicted that the city would be broken down and scraped like the top of a rock, and the stones and the timber and the soil would be thrown into the midst of the water. He predicted that the city would become a place for spreading nets, and he predicted that the city would never be rebuilt again. History reveals that everything Ezekiel prophesied about Tyre came to pass. Nebuchadnezzar besieged Tyre for 13 years in the days of Ithabal, their king. The king of Babylon severely damaged the mainland, as Ezekiel predicted, but the island city remained primarily unaffected. Regarding the prediction that many nations would come up against Tyre, in 392 BC, Tyre was involved in a war which arose between the Persians and the Avengers of Cyprus, in which the king of Egypt took Tyre by assault. Sixty, year later, 60 years later, in 332, Alexander the Great besieged Tyre and crushed it. Thus, Ezekiel prophecy about many nations remained a historical reality. Then, in 333 B.C., Ezekiel's 250-year-plus-old prophecy that Tyre would be destroyed and its building materials would be cast into the midst of the sea of the waters yet had to materialize. However, however secular history details Alexander's destruction of Tyre which coincides precisely with Ezekiel's prophecy concerning what would happen to the city's building materials. As Ezekiel had predicted, the stones, the timbers, and the soil of the mainland city were thrown into the midst of the sea to create a land bridge upon which Alexander's army could come and cross the island to defeat the city of Tyre. For Ezekiel to have accurately guessed the situation would be insanity. And then ultimately, in AD, AD 1291, the inhabitants of Tyre were massacred and the city was brought to destruction. After this major defeat in 1291, several travel logs in which visitors to the city mentioned that citizens of the area in 1697 were only a few poor wretches subsiding chiefly upon fishing. Taking these accounts into consideration, it's obvious that many nations continued to come up against the island city, that it was destroyed on numerous occasions and became a place for fishing, fulfilling Ezekiel's prediction about the spreading of nets. All of these prophecies made by Ezekiel were proven to be historically accurate. Skeptics are forced to su suggest a later, dating, a later date for his writings. Yet such a later date cannot be maintained, and the admonition of Ezekiel's accuracy stands as irrefutable evidence of the prophet's divine inspiration. God looked hundreds of years into the future and instructed Ezekiel precisely what to write so that in the centuries following the predici predictions, the, fulfill the fulfillment of every detail of the prophet's words could be de denied by no student of history. When the word of the Lord came to the prophet, when the word of the prophet came to pass, the prophet will be known as the one the Lord has truly sent. Jeremiah 28, 9. 
The second prophecy that proves the Bible is the fall of Babylon. In Isaiah 13, 19, the prophet Isaiah described how God would destroy the powerful kingdom of Babylon. Writings that had already occurred, Isaiah declared Babylon would fall in, verses, in Isaiah 21, 21, verse 9. He then prophesied that Babylon would fall to the Medes and Persians. Turn with me to Isaiah 21, and we'll read the first 10 verses. Isaiah 21, the first 10 verses. It reads, The oracle concerning the wilderness of the sea. As the whirlwinds in Nagab sweep on, it comes from the wilderness from a terrible land. A stern vision is told to me, the traitor betrays and the destroyer destroys. Go up, Elam, lay siege, O Media. All the signs she has caused I bring to an end. Therefore my loins are fulfilled with anguish. Pangs have seized me, like the pangs of a woman in labor. I'm, I'm bowed down so that I cannot hear. I'm dismayed so that I cannot see. My heart staggers. Horror has appalled me. The twilight I long for has been turned for me into trembling. They prepare a table, they spread rugs, rugs, they eat, they drink. I rise, O prince, oil the shield. For thus the Lord said to me, Go set a watchman, let him announce what he sees. When he sees riders, horsemen in pairs, riders on donkeys, riders on camels, listen to him diligently, very diligently. Then he who who saw cried out upon a watchtower, I stand, O Lord, continually by day, and at my post I am stationed, whole nights. And behold, here comes riders, horsemen, and pairs. And he answered, Fallen, fallen is Babylon, and all the carved image of her gods. He has shattered to the ground. On my threshold and windowed, windowed one, what I have heard from the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I announce to you. Then in the latter part of Isaiah 44 and the beginning of Isaiah 45, the prophet speaks of a man named Cyrus who would conquer the city of Babylon. The prophecy is remarkable since Isaiah was not even born till around 100 since Cyrus was not even born till around 150 years later after the prophet made this statement. Not only did Isaiah predict that Cyrus would overthrow Babylon, he also wrote that Cyrus, serving as Jehovah's anointed and shepherd, would release the Jews from captivity and assist them in their return to Jerusalem for the purpose of rebuilding the temple. All this was written almost two centuries before Cyrus conquered Babylon in 539 B.C. Amazingly, secular history verifies that all of these events came true. There really was a man named Cyrus who ruled the Medo-Persian Empire. He did conquer Babylon, and just as Isaiah prophesied, he assisted the Jews in their return to Jerusalem in the rebuilding of the temple. Although there are more prophecies that prove the Bible, that, that prove the Bible is the inspired word of God, the last prophecy I have is the Messianic prophecies. In the Old Testament, there are more than 250 prophecies about the coming of the Lord. While it is true that most people's lives can only be told after they lived it, the life of Jesus was told before he arrived on earth. In addition, a host of prophecies concerning Christ were intentionally specific and could not have been arranged by a human who was falsely claiming to be the Messiah. For example, in Micah chapter 5, verse 2, we are told where Jesus was going to be born. The circumstances of, Messiah, of the Messiah's death were detail, detailed even down to his burial. In contrasting the God of Israel with the pagan idols of old, the prophet Isaiah issued a challenge to those who believed the potency of their pagan deities. Isaiah said this about their idols. Let them bring forth and show us what will happen. Let them show the former things, what they were, that we may consider them. Show the things that are to come hereafter, that we may not know that you are gods. Isaiah 41, 22 through 23. According to Isaiah, any deity that could consistently forecast the future would be recognized as a true god. While any unable to tell the future should be relegated to the rubbish pile of false religions. In order to prove that the God of Israel was the true God, Isaiah quoted this from the mouth of God. He said, I am God and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient times things that are not done yet. Isaiah 46, 9 through 10. The fall of Tyre and Babylon, the reign of Cyrus, and the coming of the Messiah are but a few prominent examples of prophecy in the Bible. When evidence is honestly considered, Someone seeking the truth must admit that the prophecies contained in the Bible show that it was penned by the inspiration of God. No series of books in human history has maintained the supernatural consistency that is present within the pages of the Bible. From the first book of Genesis to the last book of Revelation, 
approximately 40 men pinned individual writings that combine to form the best-selling, most widely distributed, perfectly unified, flawlessly written book ever produced. The human genius never could have produced a work with such predictive prophecy, scientific foreknowledge, and overall factual accuracy. Common sense demands an adequate explanation. The only rational conclusion, which is, in keeping with the evidence at hand, is that the Bible is given by inspiration of God. Let us pray. I'm so thankful, dear Lord, for this wonderful opportunity we've had to hear a portion of your word. And we pray that you'll be with this gospel meeting and, and pray that much good can come from it. And we're so thankful that these young men have come together and have uh, decided to preach your gospel. And we pray that you just strengthen them as they go on and grow in the faith. And we're so thankful, dear Lord, that you've loved us enough to send your son Jesus into this world. And we know that we don't deserve Jesus and the grace and the, the, sin, the forgiveness of sins, but we're so thankful for it, dear Lord. We pray as we go out into this world uh, that we can be good examples and good Christian lights into the world uh, and we can spread your gospel into, into a world that so desperately needs it. Thank you, dear Lord, and we pray much good can come from this effort. In Jesus' name, amen.